We are joined here by the Democratic candidate for Secretary of State, Jenna Griswold. Thank you so much for coming back to the program. Well, thank you for having me. So it seems like a lot of the work of the Colorado Secretary of State's office is really kind of administrative. It's not ideological. It's not partisan. Is there any reason why Colorado would be better served to have a Democrat in that office than a Republican? Well, I, I really just think it comes down to the candidate's vision of the world, right? And, and I'm running because I specifically believe that the Secretary of State's duty is to make it easier for all eligible Coloradans to vote. Uh, and that's a, a nonpartisan belief. So whether you're Republican, Independent, or Democrat, I want to make it easier to exercise the franchise in Colorado. Uh, so I, I don't think that's a, a party position. It, it's just a worldview position by the candidate. Sure. And the Secretary of State will list off all these things that he's done to make elections more accessible. What hasn't he done? Uh, well, I would say what I plan to do is two major things. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to expand automatic voter registration, which is a mechanism to really drive up participation, uh, drive up registration, and get more people involved in our democracy. How would it particularly work? Yeah, so how that works, it, it's actually already started in Colorado at the DMV. It started last summer. And it changes the burden of opting in or opting out of registering to vote. So, for example, at the DMV, uh, you go and the DMV worker previously would say, would you like to register to vote? And now they say, I'm going to register you to vote unless you opt out. So we have to make sure that that system is working accurately. And then I want to expand outwards. Uh, you know, younger people, people living in the bigger cities are no longer driving as much. Uh, and then I think we can expect driverless car technology in the next decade. Uh, and I fundamentally believe government should meet people where they are, and they might not be in the DMV in the next couple of years. So how does a motor voter law, as people have commonly called it, uh, yeah. called it apply to somebody who's riding a scooter down the street? Uh, the, the motor voter, well, if you don't, it depends if you're required to have a driver's license sure. to get it. So if you're required to go to the DMV, uh, federal law requires you to be offered to register, uh, and it's switching that burden. Uh, but uh, secondly, look, um, you know, we have a, a statewide voter registration system in Colorado. Uh, in that system, it's a real-time system of who's voted and who, who hasn't. When it goes down, it causes two- to three-hour delays on Election Day. Uh, it's gone down in Colorado 2010. Uh, 2014, my opponent was on notice. It went down again in 2016, and it did cause those two to three hour lines. Uh, I fundamentally believe that voting should be accessible for everyone. Uh, whether you're going to send in your mail-in ballot or, or you want to go vote in person, uh, we can't have two to three hour lines. I want to fix that. So how is it that you're going to fix that? Because if you look at the state's computer systems as a whole, under our Democratic Governor John Hickenlooper, they're a mess, and we frequently deal with outages at the, at the Department of Revenue and elsewhere. So sure. how will you, Jenna Griswold, as the Secretary of State, fix the issue that the governor has not been able to fix? Well, so the, the IT systems of the governor and the secretary of state are separate systems. Mm -hmm. they, they talk to each other. And in one instance, it was them talking to each other that led to an outage. Uh, the other two times, it was the secretary of state's statewide voter registration system. And look, Kyle, uh, we live in one of the best states for IT and cyber. Uh, and I fundamentally believe that government can make voting our voting systems work for 12 hours on election day. I fundamentally believe that. Uh, and one thing that I, I would say is a major uh, distinction between me and my opponent is, look, my, my opponent has executed the laws, but he has opposed laws that would increase access and participation. Uh, so, for example, universal mail-in ballot, uh, which most county clerks uh, supported, Republicans and Democrats, he fought against. Same-day voter registration, he fought against that. Uh, and the list goes on. The recall in 2013, when he sat as county clerk, two or three of the polling locations were outside of the district. So I want to make sure that not only as I, as Secretary of State, am executing the laws, but we're also leading forward uh, in that we're always trying to strive for increased participation because at the end of the day, it's our democracy and everybody deserves to have their voice heard if they're eligible to vote. You brought up Secretary of State uh, Williams' concerns about mail-in ballots. And for anybody who wants to watch the full conversations that we're posting online, we discuss that with the Secretary of State. I want to return quickly to clear up one thing that you're talking about with the computer system. Sure. Is the issue a lack of funding? Is it a lack of will? And if it's funding, where do you get it? Yeah. So there's uh, different reasons cited for all the outages. Uh, but at the end of the day, it comes down to testing as much as possible, as many contingencies as possible uh, to make sure that the systems are going to work. If you expect, uh, you know, that participation is going to be a million people, 
quadruple it on election day. It has to work on that day. Uh, and again, here's a, another difference between me and my opponent. Uh, I believe that the Secretary of State should be getting all the federal funding possible. We're a swing state. The governor's race has been decided by 5,300 votes. Uh, we just had a, a county commissioner race in Albert County decided by one vote. Our systems have to work. Uh, and my opponent has fought against the DHS funding uh, that he's used for the last year. Uh, I'm going to say if Department of Homeland Security says, here's some money for you, I'll say, hey, double it, we're a swing state. Uh, we're in an atmosphere where the White House has been actively trying to kill election cybersecurity bills in the Senate uh, and in the House of Representatives. Uh, I really believe that we need all the funding possible, and I'll fight for that. So the, the federal resources are there. I'll make sure we get them. Colorado Secretary of State runs elections. Is it an issue you've never run an election before? Well, I've worked on various elections, right? Uh, so I, I've worked on various elections. I know how elections work. Uh, and I'm also a small business owner. You worked owner. as a partisan attorney in elections, but the job of the Secretary of State is to run an election without partisanship. So is it an issue that you've never done that before? Well, so I, I served as a voter protection attorney for President Obama in 2014. And I was there again uh, uh, in other elections. And I would say this election, for Secretary of State is as much about leadership and decision-making values and propositions for the future. Uh, you know, uh, you're 100% right. Uh, I am not a partisan politician. My opponent, he served as chair of the El Paso County Republicans. He's been in partisan office for the last 15 years. Uh, I have not been in partisan office. I haven't been county clerk because this is my first race. Uh, I grew up actually um, a lot different than most politicians. I grew up very working class in Estes Park. Uh, I started working the summer after seventh grade, first person in my family to attend a four-year college and law school. Uh, and I realized later in life how important elections are. Uh, so look, uh, I have the leadership and the values to know, for example, we have to fix our statewide voter registration system. I have the leadership to know that universal mail-in ballots is a good thing for the state. I want to expand access. And when it comes down to it, there's a lot of things that we can do in the Secretary of State's office, such as fight against dark money campaign finance reform, uh, a lot of the dark money loopholes that exist, my opponent has fought against. Uh, we also have a major disagreement about sending Coloradans personal voter information to the Trump administration. I want to talk about that in just a moment, sure. but another question. Um, you have a uh, small legal practice, small business. Um, is it an issue that you've never run an office the size of the Secretary of State's operation? Uh, well, you know, previous to having my own practice, I, I started my career uh, at practicing international anti-corruption law. And then I actually ran the D.C. office for Governor Hickenlooper and, and fought for Colorado's interests. How many in, people in were in that office? It, it was just me. Okay. Uh, but I was uh, running uh, the federal portfolio, working with a lot of folks, uh, and I fought for our interests. And one of the things that I am most proud of, Kyle, uh, was actually helping bring back a billion dollars of flood relief. Uh, so I, I do think that the Secretary of State's office, number one, has great employees that really do a, an outstanding job. But this office, uh, look, you, you are not, um, the county clerks are administering the day-to-day -day elections, but you need leadership at the top and the right decision making. Uh, and I'm confident that my view of the world is to get more eligible people registered to vote uh, and make sure that our systems are ready for the 21st century challenges because they're already here. You touched on this, but the, the core of your campaign is this pledge to make Colorado's elections accessible and secure. How specifically are Colorado's elections not secure right now? So we've taken tremendous steps forward uh, in cybersecurity. We were one of the 21 states targeted by cyber attack. Uh, and Mueller's first indictment actually shows that Russian agents traveled here to Colorado. Uh, we have taken steps forward at the same time, uh, just within the last year, Colorado was given a, a B ranking on cybersecurity from the Center for American Progress. Uh, a B is good for chemistry class, not for our elections. Uh, the Secretary of State's office also just did a, a phishing experiment with 24 county clerks. Uh, so phishing is sending those fake emails, and if you click on the link, if it was real, it would be opening up a door. Uh, the emails were clicked 757 times. There's a lot of work we still have to do. We have some of the securest elections in the nation. There's work we have to do. And again, uh, we're in an atmosphere where uh, Senate, the Senate Republicans, House Republicans, and White ha the White House have killed bills for election cybersecurity and funding. So I'll fight for resources for Colorado to make sure that we continue uh, to, to innovate in cyber and, and really bring private and public sector together so that we're ready to go. 
the last Secretary of State, not Secretary of State Williams, but the Republican Secretary of State Scott Gessler went looking for systemic voter fraud in our state and he was not able to find it despite his best efforts. Yeah. Secretary of State Wayne Williams says there is no systemic voter fraud in our state. There are simply a few instances here and there. Would you agree with him on that? Yes. Okay. The president set up a commission to look for proof of his unsubstantiated claim that millions of people voted illegally in the elections. And there was a disagreement between you and the Secretary of State on what should be turned over to that commission. Sure. The Secretary of State says, I will turn over anything that anybody else could get just by filing a request. And you disagreed with that. What would you have done then if not just follow the law? Yeah. So I, to clarify, I would follow the law. Uh, you so know, you would have turned over the information they asked for? Colorado law is not in a vacuum. Uh, we have the Constitution, federal law, and Colorado law. Uh, I think there was a lot of red flags around this commission right from the beginning, uh, first and foremost. Can, can I ask you first about the law, though? I, I understand that you're concerned about the commission. Sure. And we've already established it was set up to go looking for proof of something the president said where there's no sign that it's true. Yep. But the issue here is you're saying that Colorado law should be set aside to look for something in the federal law? What would you have looked for in order to deny the request? So when this request was being made, uh, there were various lawsuits filed for federal overreach. Uh, they were sitting with the judiciary, uh, and the judi judiciary has to see, okay, is this commission valid? Are they making a valid request? Colorado law does not sit in a vacuum. When you're thinking about law, you're thinking about the Tenth Amendment, uh, which says that if there's not a law for the federal government to act, they cannot act. It's state rights amendment. Uh, you have federal law, which, by the way, requires a federal commission to show, number one, there's a reasonable basis for collecting voter information or any public information. And number two, it will be stored in a secure server. That's federal law. Then we have Colorado law. So the, all those laws are going on at once. Uh, my position has been and continues to be that because this commission uh, was, number one, not guaranteeing that information would be stored in a secure server, so suddenly there's a treasure trove of everybody's information across the country. Uh, number two, there's all these lawsuits for federal overreach. Any of them in Colorado's district? None of them, correct? Uh, filed here? A, a yeah. lot of, no, I, I don't believe so. Okay. I don't believe so. So but would you have asked for an injunction then? Is Because, I mean, because what, what would have stopped you from following the law? Would you have gone and, and asked for a federal injunction? Uh, well, it depends. At the very least, uh, look, um, I would have waited until the judiciary said whether or not the federal government's actions were uh, correct or not. My opponent had a different decision. He said, it's good they're collecting this information sent our voter information over and, and said he would send it before even uh, being told that there was a secure server to store it on. And it cost thousands of people to cancel their voter registration. At the very least, I would wait until the lawsuits were, uh, were figured out by the judiciary. And if Colorado it, law says you have three days. Well, then I would have filed an injunction. I, I have no problem standing up for the people of Colorado and our privacy rights, so, especially against a rogue federal commission. No problem at all. So what this Trump commission wanted, these documents, they're obtained by political parties, they're obtained by journalists, they're obtained by businesses, I, just all over the place. It's fair to say that your campaign has, has either directly or indirectly benefited from the use of those exact same records that you didn't want to give to the Trump administration, right? Uh, I mean, State Democratic Party has them, your campaign yes, probably has them. Yes, but neither here nor there, right? We live in a federalism, uh, and the federal government isn't like my campaign or uh, the DNC, the RNC, or a private person, and they're treated differently. Uh, that's, uh, I believe in rule and law, I believe in following the law, and again, I have absolutely no problem for standing up for Coloradans. Uh, and look, lots of Republican secretaries of state agreed with me. Uh, our a neighbor, Secretary of State up to the north, Republican Secretary of State of Wyoming, uh, instantly expressed concern about federal overreach and the privacy of his citizens. Uh, and if my opponent would have just waited, this commission was disbanded because of those legal challenges. Uh, his decision caused thousands of people to cancel their voter registration. So no, no I, I disagree with his decision to send our voter data. Uh, if a law, if the lawsuits would have went through and the judiciary would have said, okay, this is a valid request, this isn't a rogue federal commission, and yes, you should comply, I would have complied. L last question sure. here. Colorado Secretary of State elections, at least through the last couple of cycles, have, have featured people who have had fairly dry views of the office and what they do, and, sure. and, and they're, they're pretty cordial with one another, uh, and they differ on small points here and there. You and the Secretary of State are really at loggerheads in this election on some, on some big issues, and 
he said to me that he doesn't think that you're up to the job. I don't recall hearing that in a Secretary of State's race in the last couple of cycles. What do you think when you hear that? Oh, well, I just think it's a shame uh, seeing personal attacks. Uh, why I'm running is uh, about policy. It's about leadership and the vision of the future. Uh, number one, it, it, I think I've demonstrated I am up for the job. I'm a first-time candidate from a working-class background in rural Colorado, uh, and this campaign has so much momentum. We outperformed a sitting Secretary of State by 96,000 votes in the primary. I hope to do it again if I can earn the support of Coloradans in the general. But I would just say the reason I'm running is not uh, to attack Wayne on, on personal issues. It's to expand access to voting rights. It's to ex uh, expand automatic voter registration, fix our statewide voter registration system so folks aren't standing in line for two to three hours on election day. Uh, I want to stop secret, unpolit uh, secret political spending in Colorado races and enforce campaign finance laws. You would need the legislature to change the campaign finance laws, right? Uh, to change campaign finance laws, but not to audit campaign finance filings, right. which generally is not being done. And, and in the name of making sure that there's not corruption, not foreign money, not corporate money in our elections, uh, that's something that the Secretary of State should be doing and I plan to do. Uh, and then lastly, I think there's a lot of work still left to be done in the office to provide tools to small business owners and entrepreneurs. That's why I'm running. Uh, and I'm definitely up for the challenge. I, I'm looking forward to it. And I, I look forward to starting to work right after we get elected to make sure that we're ready to go day one. Uh, and I, I would uh, be honored to be Colorado's next Secretary of State uh, and really look forward to the general election. All right. Jenna Griswold, Democratic candidate for Secretary of State, thank you so much for coming on the program sharing your views. Thank you. Thank you for having me.